So in the prior video, we exported uh, the warp breaks data set from R. Um, this particular video is going to show you how to set up a, li a permanent library within SAS desktop. So this would be the option you're using uh, if you have a virtual, if you're using the virtual lab, um, and then also how to import that data uh, as a um, as a SAS data file. Um, so I'm here in SAS desktop on, on my own personal machine. Uh, so when I work with the C drive and that sort of thing, remember if you're on a, in a virtual lab, you need to use the I drive or a OneDrive. Uh, uh, th those two options will be uh, the option, uh, you know, to ensure that that nothing is lost when you disconnect from uh, the virtual desktop. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, is actually create a permanent library. Um, so here on the Explorer pane, you can see uh, libraries. I have uh, Bana 6043. Um, this little button will allow you to go back, um, back up in the hierarchy. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a new library. Here you can see I can probably create a new library with a right click uh, option. Uh, you also have this option up here in the, the, the toolbar. Uh, add new library. So I'll click that um, and then we'll name it Spring 19. Remember um, SAS, the, the library names for SAS follow certain rules. Uh, for example, it can't be more than eight characters. I don't know. Yeah, so it won't let me do eight characters, more than eight. Um, it also can't start with numbers. Here it doesn't show that, um, that it's an error. However, if I were to proceed through the, the next step, it would, it would tell me that uh, that's not a valid SAS name. Um, so I'm going to call it SPR19 for spring 2019. Um, uh, the engine is, uh, you don't need to do anything with that. Uh, and then click the box here, enable it startup. That way this uh, library is accessible to you at all times. Uh, or, I mean, for every SAS session that you open. Otherwise, you have to create this every time. Um, now for the path, uh, we'll, we can just browse our PC. Uh, remember, this will be uh, your iDrive or OneDrive if you're working um, off a virtual lab. Um, you can see, I'll go to my desktop. Um, this is uh, this is where the warp breaks data set is located. However, um, I'm going to put it in the SAS data uh, uh, location. So I'm going to call SAS data uh, as the, the location of uh, the, the library. Um, so you can see here, here's the file path. See users T530, which is my computer name, desktop, and then SAS data folder. Um, so when I do that, um, I can click OK. And you can see I um, already have a library, and there are already data sets in it um, because they're within uh, the, the folder on my, uh, uh, within the actual folder itself. Um, so it automatically knows to, to, to read those or, or to view them. Um, so if I go to SAS data on my desktop, you can see these two SAS data sets. Um, here in, in, in Windows, they're recognized as SAS data sets. Uh, if you look at the extension, go to properties, um, it has the extension .sas7bdat. Uh, so this is a SAS data set. Um, it does, SAS requires that the data be in a format and a, 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 a saved as a file type that it understands and knows how to work with and read, et cetera. Um, and so CSV files by itself or Excel files by themselves aren't readable or workable within SAS. So it needs to be created, uh, needs to be converted or imported as a SAS data set. Uh, so that'll be our next step uh, to show you how to do that. Um, so what I'll do, uh, I think you can delete this from here. You probably can. Uh, so if I delete it, it should be deleted from here as well. So I deleted it from um, the actual folder. Uh, and now we're actually we're going to essentially import that data in. Um, so the way to do that in, in SAS, um, uh, SAS desktop, no, you can't right click here. Maybe you can right click here. Yeah, so you could probably go to table. Let me see. Um, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so that doesn't work. Um, what, what does work is file import data. Um, so this is your import data wizard. Uh, if we click on that, um, we're going to get a few prompts. Uh, the first thing is what type of data do you wish to import? 
Um, so you have this drop down menu, note the extensions. Uh, so our extension for our CSV file was .csv. Uh, so it's not a Microsoft Excel workbook, even though it uh, by default will open with Microsoft Excel. Um, so if we right click on this, and go to properties, you can see that the extension is actually .csv. Um, so when we're in SAS, uh, there is an option for CSV here. There's also options for many other file types, um, but we're going to select CSV. We don't need to worry about that box. Hit next. We're going to tell uh, SAS where the file is located. So this is uh, desktop SAS data. And we can click on the warp breaks data set in order to, lo uh, in order to tell SAS what the, uh, what the file is. We'll click next. Um, and then this basically is telling us where in SAS are we going to put it. Um, the work library, remember, is your temporary library. Um, anything that you save or, or do in this library, uh, once you close the SAS session, it will not be available in the next SAS session. Uh, so always keep that in mind. Um, and so we're going to instead do our permanent library SPR Spring 19. Um, and so this data set will be there permanently. Uh, member is simply uh, the name of the data set. So we're just going to call it Warp Breaks. Um, and then we'll click Next. Um, SAS also has the option of uh, basically showing you the code that generates the import. Um, you can save it somewhere so that you can, you know, execute the same procedure uh, with, you know, just pressing Run with code. Uh, but we're not going to do that now, so we'll just hit Finish. And we'll s you can see in the SAS log, uh, which is also, this will happen in... Um, SAS Studio it tells you it has 54 observations and four variables. Um, so when I output, uh, I actually pointed it to a, a, a CSV file that I had output, um, not in the prior video, but in a, in a former exercise, and I didn't suppress the row names. Uh, so that's why there are four variables here instead of the three that are actually in the data set. Um, and so you can see here we have the Warp Breaks data set in our library. Um, this is essentially what I'm looking for for the screenshot. Um, so it'll tell you contents of permanent library uh, and then the data set. So I want to confirm that you can create a permanent library uh, and then also uh, get data into SAS because we'll be doing this uh, many times throughout this course. Um, so this kind of concludes this video for working in SAS Desktop to create a new library and then also to get data into SAS.